no, Troy, it's too soon. We can't go. We can't go live now. <laughs> We're not ready. It's the fans too late. Won't understand. It's too late. I've <laughs> done it. Nobody's even here yet. It's too late. We're in our 10 minute buffer zone. <laughs> we are. Yeah, we're here on time. They're going to worry about us. I know. I know. Nobody's going to be seriously. here on time. They're going to know we're through. There's something. Yeah, exactly. Don't tell them. We've got eyeballs. You know, this is our little mutants and masterminds. It's our warm up. It's our little, um, you know, we'll do a nice, uh, a nice tight five and um, hang out and, you know, have some fun. Um, if you're joining wow, us. That sounds that- dirty. I, know. I don't think I've ever done a type five. Yeah, I know. Yeah, more of a like, no. I'm not gonna say it. I'm more gonna, of a one on one kind of guy. <laughs> I am gonna. I'm gonna. More of like a loose my, seven. Well, I will I'm ask how your weekend say, was later, a loose, Troy. Like a loose ten. <laughs> like a flappy, a flappy six. Flappy six. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the comics code is gonna throw us out. Seriously. I was drinking Troytholomew. <laughs> <laughs> I am a delicious drink. AJ Real is here. Um, howdy to you. Um, we are, you know, we're just, we're having all kinds of fun. Who else is joining? I see, uh, ooh, we've got some people who are hanging out, uh, joining us on the Facebooks. Welcome, friends. Moving to Masterminds Monday begins, you know, so shortly. So very soon. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm taming my hair, so everybody bear with us. It's right. It's very humid today, so... It is, yeah, yeah. Uh, you're you're uh, you're still out and about in the world. Um, mm-hmm. We're I am, all. I'm down in the wilds of Florida. That's yeah. right, the wild well, Florida wilds. Is one of the you know challenging adventure environments we're going to talk about high humidity. Yeah. Oh <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You need a one point uh, feature detangler. Mm-hmm. <laughs> AJ Real, it's good to see you. Who else do we have uh, joining us? We've got um, we've got some people hanging out on uh, YouTube. Uh, hello to you, friends. We're also streaming on Twitch, and uh, I'm presuming everyone can hear and see because I'm gonna turn off this m- music. It is so bad. It is the baked in <laughs> music. It's just like so obnoxious. But I am your disembodied pal, Troy, and these are three of my very best friends. Uh, we've got Steve Kenson, we've got Alex Thomas, and we've got Crystal Frazier, and we're all here to hang out with y'all on Mutant Semester Runs Monday, and we've got a pretty awesome show planned. It's actually yeah. planned, like legit planned, right, Crystal? <laughs> uh, well, as close to planned as we ever do with Green Ronin, sure. That is true. <laughs> maybe <laughs> maybe overly planned. Or we met beforehand and we talked. That is right. <laughs> I that think that that's a plan. I think that does. A plan is constituted. Yeah, in any in any criminal court, that would count as conspiracy. So exactly. We oh have, no. We have committed <laughs> planning. Um, uh, tell us what the show is about today, Crystal. Uh, oh, today's show is about adventure locations and mm-hmm. how you how you help bring the location alive for your for your players at the table. Uh, we are going to get into some Star Fa- or Starhaven adventure locations. Uh, and after that, we'll get up or get into talking about, uh, you know, broader locations and how to use rules to make things exciting. And how as a player, you can possibly turn those rules around to hurt your GM, make them cry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I like it. It's a little something for everybody today. Mm-hmm. We do not advocate player on GM violence here at Eminem. <laughs> Only with consent. Yeah. Well, awesome. So now, as I understand, there are three different um, uh, pitches for mm-hmm. for what we're doing today. So, um, you know, Summer Starhaven is basically we're hanging out. We're, we are planning all kinds of stuff, preparing actually uh, with the Patreon, which you'll find at uh, mm-hmm. patreon.com slash mutants, a N D mastermind. Uh, I like it. Uh, Foltis, uh, that's Jonesy says, uh, mm-hmm. Jonesy's in his, uh, he's bring the pain. <laughs> I love it. Um, I do believe he's referring to Alex very specifically, mm-hmm. um, but, um, but yeah, so there are, um, you know, we we're doing all manner of plans and ideas and, and uh, um, uh, collaborating with the people on the Patreon. And this is, we're going to be talking about environments and the three of you have a pitch. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Yep. 
uh, first of all, we've we've actually got you know a new villain for the Patreon up this week. Uh, we are getting into the contenders who. About about three, four months ago, I was like, Troy, I don't know if emergencies are going to come up, but if they ever do, here are some free Patreon villains we can put up in the event of an emergency. It was great. Yeah, it was yeah. it was very, very helpful. So <laughs> our Troy broke that glass. I did. I did. Yeah. <laughs> that, that ampule or whatever. And yeah. So we're releasing some of my favorite sort of generic brute force villains who mm-hmm. I've gotten some uh, fun out of at the table. Uh, the contenders, who are a boxing-themed band of supervillains who got their powers from the DNA scent process. Yeah, so uh, the last so. week we released... Um, oh my gosh, it's not... <laughs> it's not Moose, it's... Gr- knuckles? It's Gorilla Knuckles? Oh, bear Knuckles? Bear, bear knuckles. knuckles. Bear Knuckles. That's what it is. Bear yeah. Knuckle. Mm-hmm. Bear Knuckle, yes. yes. Who has, who has literal bear knuckles. Bear knuckles. That's He'll right. kill you That's... with his bear hands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so we're, um, and we'll release another, uh, uh, you know, do you have a favorite we should release today? I mean, I think Flyboy is a lot of fun, and mm-hmm. I had to figure out how to use uh, third edition mutants and masterminds to build some of the second edition feats. Oh. Uh, so, yeah, we translated one of the old second edition ranked feats into Mm -hmm. powers that flyboy has nice that's very nice all right flyboy it is um we'll release flyboy right after the conclusion of this um uh mutants masterminds monday so you all have that to look forward to and um no not flyweight or flyboy flyweight Fly weight. Because okay. they're all boxing puns. I get it. So fly weight. And then I do believe, I wonder, I think we're done with um, all of the uh, alternatines. So mm-hmm. we need to release two contenders today? Uh, or two contenders this week. And do we want to space it out and do one on Mondays I, and one I on think like so. Thursdays? You know, maybe we'll take it up with the Patreon. Yeah. Well, Ooh, new, yeah. new poll. New poll. Right. Exactly. Oh. See, look at all this content. We're making it up <laughs> on the fly. That's why we're professionals. Don't don't try this at home, friends. We're um, we're agile. That's mm-hmm. exactly right. Respond to your demands. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Um, but yeah, so we'll we'll take care of that. And we'll find out when uh, we'll we'll connect with our patrons and find out when they want to get their uh, stat blocks. And uh, we know one of them will be flyweight, and the other one will be you know I don't know. We'll see. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll see. It'll be a surprise. Um, all right. So, how do we want to present our uh, alien environments or alien? Uh... Uh, I guess we have the. Let's have the the crowd ask which of the. So here's how it's gonna work. Yeah. Steve, Alex, and I have each prepared a cool location on Europa. Now, each of these locations is going to get like a brief write up, a paragraph or two in the book itself, along with probably a half dozen other locations. But one location, we're going to break out and do a two-page spread, kind of like a a mini danger zone, getting into detail about this location, and we're going to feature it in the adventure in the book, and we're going to have some environment rules, and it'll be like a big deal location that you as the GM can drop into your adventures for whatever you need. So what we're, because we don't know what that location should be, we're going to present the three ideas we came up with and then have everybody vote over the next week or two and decide which of those three will be our our big featured adventure location. location. Yeah, yeah, featured location. What will be our European danger zone? Yes. Love it. So, All yeah, right. who do you who does everybody want to hear from first? Oh no. Oh, you're back. Do you hear us? Oh. Yeah. Was I gone? Moment, just moment for a minute now. Froze. Just, you, just as uh, full disclosure, um, Crystal's in the middle of uh, in, you know, like there's a hurricane between her and us, and uh, Steve's got um, a poltergeist that's uh, knocking and <laughs> trying to get into the room from the outside. And Alex, you just and got Alex, that. Go ahead. Alex has a pet monkey. <gasps> yeah, that's right. I was going to yeah. say Alex has a, a beard. No, it seems like <laughs> seems Unruly. like folks want Alex to go first. So yeah. Let's see here. Uh, make the new kid go first. Okay. Uh, just yes. because I don't think he's talked yet. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, new kid. I hope I've talked yet. I think I've spoken. I don't know. Is my audio coming through? It is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, my pitch 
for a special location on Europa is a preserver biomodification facility, otherwise known as a monster factory. Uh, nestled below the west wing of Starhaven, hidden amidst the rolling snowbanks of an alien tundra, lies a gargantuan preserver factory. It was thought lost, but dangerous places have a habit of attracting the wrong people. The corrupted cavalier, Null, was driven into this facility by hostile wildlife during her exile on Europa, and she found everything she could dream of in the buzzing preserver halls. One of the building's robotic attendants informed her that this was a preserver biomodification facility for gargantuan-class terraforms. She salvaged what she could for short jaunts to Earth to terrorize the Magna Force, but recently she has restored the building's primary purpose. Now she uses it to create monstrous kaiju, which she sends to Earth through an aquatic portal linking Europa's subsurface ocean with the Pacific Ocean. Null has made this factory her prime headquarters as she plans her conquest for Earth and Star Haven. Nice, nice. That that's pretty solid. Um, all right, and so what are we calling it again? That's uh... preserver biomodification facility or monster factory, whichever monster you prefer. Factory. Monster Hope we lost Crystal, um, but uh, she will jump back in here in just a minute. So it's the Preserver mm-hmm. Monster Factory. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, but what's the <laughs> official name? Because we'll, I, I just want to uh, type it in the chat. Bio Modification Facility. Bio Modification. Love it. Er, Monster Factory. Okay. Um, all right. Well, Steve, why don't you go next? Okay. So my site is a little bit more um, uh, low key than the you know uh, preserver biomodification factory. Uh, several kilometers uh, to the northeast of Starhaven, uh, there is an alien starship uh, embedded in the icy surface of Europa, at the bottom of a shallow impact crater. Uh, that has partly refilled with subsurface water and refrozen. The ship's primary systems are non-functional, but minimal power and life support still operate. Uh, And according uh, to the uh, still intact logs, uh, the ship is a a, a Drick scavenger. Uh, The Drick are a a minor humanoid species. Uh, They look like little reptilian goblins. Uh, if you look on page 102 of the Cosmic Handbook, uh, you will see a Drick uh, as uh, one of um, um, Black Star's minions. Um, the, the scavenger came to Europa some years ago um, in order to try and loot what they could from the preserver ruins. But when they took off, something happened and the ship crashed back on the surface of the moon some distance away uh, from Starhaven. Uh, the uh, survivors apparently uh, either abandoned the ship uh, and never returned or something happened to them. Uh, mm. And now the hold of the, the crashed ship is full of all of the choice bits and pieces that the Drick have looted from Starhaven, many of which are probably still pretty useful and valuable. Um, and who knows, maybe one of them is what's responsible for why they crashed. I like it. So you've got a, a ready-made little dungeon crawl deep beneath the ice of Europa uh, in order to explore the the halls and holds of this this uh, uh, little goblin pirate ship. I love it. I love it. Um, so two so far two very you know dangerous setups. I mean, I mean they're they're all right. I mean if you. If you think a spaceship in your space setting is interesting or a mm-hmm. science facility in your science fiction setting is interesting, mm-hmm. what about a what about a jungle built vertically? Right. But what about the Kirby-esque wonder? Right? Where's <laughs> where's the weird? Where does Thor sleep? Uh, so I am pitching the Facet Wild, which is like I said, a jungle hidden under and in the ice of Europa, uh, Europa is covered with these massive linea, these these lines where the ice, the tectonic ice plates meet and grind against each other, uh, and they are they are openings from the surface all the way down to the oceans underneath. 
And in between, mm. there's all these chemicals bubbling up from the ocean, all this heat bubbling up from geothermal energy, radiation filtering down from overhead, air, water. The only thing you need, or the only other thing you need for life in this situation is a little imagination. <laughs> and so the Facet Wild is a massive crystalline jungle growing along the sides of and atop the the natural ice bridges within one of these massive two mile deep half mile wide canyons on Europa's surface. It is a place full of completely unique natural resources that uh, Starhaven wants to exploit. It is a viable ecosystem that cold tolerant aliens want to start settling. Uh, it is it a filled with weird preserver aliens maybe is it indigenous life is it earth life that was altered to to survive the cold who knows but it's also the only way your heroes can get from the surface to the oceans for whatever water mysteries you have if they're not on good terms with sea haven and the uh hexapods that mm -hmm. run that Surely there would be no reason to sneak into Sea Haven from, you know, some sort of back door. Why would you no. sneak into Sea Haven? There are allies and neighbors. There's of nothing course. strange or, or suspicious afoot there. Certainly not. <laughs> I love it. I mean, all three of these sound pretty remarkable. Um, now, the voting for these um, three environments, three, you know, uh, uh, dangerous spaces, um, uh, uh, to explore and, uh, you know, shenanigans was one might say, uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll vote for them on the Patreon, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. And the <clears throat> full articles for each one will go up on the Patreon this week. So you'll be able to read them in detail and kind of get a, a more detailed sense of what they are. I love that. I love that. Uh, hey, Sean Vieira says, uh, good Eminem Monday uh, to us all, but uh, he was late. He has an emergency root canal. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Yeah, put that in your environment. No, no. <laughs> that's that's really more villain territory. Yeah, yeah. truly, truly. The villain's lair, um, yeah, for you'll, sure. You'll notice there are no dentistry-themed supervillains. I think that's because there are some things we just yeah, acknowledge are wrong. That's this is too, right. too awful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess it was um, a, a little, little shop of horrors. <laughs> little shop of horrors is like, that's mm -hmm. the only villain, really. That's the only dental supervillain out there. Yeah, he yeah. He did wear a costume. That's mm -hmm. right. That's right. All right. Well, those are uh, three phenomenal locations, and we'll get uh, that information up on the Patreon so we can start the voting. And then, um, but that's not all. We've also got other th opinions to share and ideas and uh, things to explore around uh, kind of making, you know, mm -hmm. alien spaces relevant to your adventure, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I mean, in a lot of Mutants and Masterminds games, you just kind of see the heroes punch it out with the villains. You don't see the environment sort of being a character on its own very often. So it's always fun to, as a GM, it's always fun to throw weird challenges and, and complications at your players. Mm -hmm. And I mean, as a player... Oh, oh, oh no, please go ahead. I was just going to say, as a player, it's sometimes fun to have, have some variation from what you were expecting in terms of the, the, yeah. like how the fight shapes out. Or shapes mm -hmm. up. Now, do you actually create some tables and things that are, you know, like, is there sort of random stuff dependent upon, like, how, how do you work that out mechanically? Uh, I mean, mechanically, you just... <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Alex? Um, so usually what I'll do mechanically is I will list out a list of environmental factors, is usually what I call them in my thing, um, that I can that I give a turn on in initiative rounds, just to say, hey, at the beginning of each round, something happens. You can roll for it if you want to roll randomly. If there's one that you think is awesome, you can go ahead and apply that. Actually just finished working on a working on an encounter for one of my Origins games where the heroes will be facing off against a couple of um, a couple of villains in their in their enhanced interrogation room. And I came up with a whole list of devices that could be pulled in each round, uh, mm -hmm. either by the heroes or by the villains. Sounds um, like the Doom Room setup we have from the Deluxe mm, Game Mastery Guide. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
yeah, I came up with a synaptic scorcher, which is just like an affliction that people can inflict on people. Thanagarian ticklers, which are these little nth metal scarab beetles that go around and they separate your joints from the inside. That's not um, tickling. That's not how tickling works at no, all. No, that's a, yeah. Tickling yeah. not Thanagarians. The Thanagarians do not understand that concept at all. <laughs> this is the worst thing I've seen since the peeper beetle. <laughs> what is the peeper beetle? <laughs> oh, I also came up with a lullaby mace that if you hit somebody hard enough, they fall asleep. Mm. Oh. That's, that's every mace. <laughs> yeah, it's right. like it really is kind of the function of a mace. Yeah. But there are, there's autonomous torture devices that can be either pulled in by whoever's wearing the control mechanism for the environment. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or if you run over and you know try to activate it manually, you can do that. Now, so, now have you gone and, and invented what these are, what these things are? Or are they just your common sort of, uh, you know, um, uh, lullaby mace or, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, and that's just an off the rack lullaby mace. Just off, right. the rack. <laughs> just off the rack. <laughs> but I was gonna say, uh, for me at least, when I develop adventure-based whatevers, uh, complications. Sorry, uh, lots of dog barking today. Uh, <laughs> I usually work it out in in one of two ways: either mechanical effects it has, or complications that it adds to your mm -hmm. players. So, yeah. like. A high gravity planet, I can say, well, that that basically doubles how much anything weighs for lifting purposes and takes two ranks off of any movement power. So, mm -hmm. you know, everybody walks slower, flyers mm -hmm. can't fly as fast, jumpers can't jump as high, uh... things like that. Uh, but I can also just throw in complication, you know, high gravity planet or mm -hmm. you know, complication you know, radiation. Uh, and then anytime I feel like the players have it too easy, I can throw in some kind of complication, like, oh, make a save against an affliction, and I here's take a hero point for it. Or, you know, you're experiencing some weird mutations with your powers, because your pi powers come from your exposure to a radioactive centipede bite. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. you know... Oh. If you if you have this happen, then I'll give you a hero point. Yeah, I love an adventure specific complication because it's it's just such a fun way to get people more hero points, and it's mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it can come in whenever you need to, sort of esoterically as the GM. You have freedom instead of just yeah. saying, "Well, yeah, you're going to get a minus two to this roll." You can there, sort of modify it on the fly. Yeah, they're a lot of fun. I love basically I love any excuse to throw hero points at my players, and mm -hmm. I especially love the bargaining <laughs> aspect, at, like. Uh, well, you're fighting on a bridge. The fight's going mm -hmm. a little too easy for you, so I'm going to toss you a hero point if the bridge collapses out from underneath both of you. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I've even used that same idea for sort of environmentally based failures uh, mm -hmm. in on um, checks Ooh. and things like that to say, nice. you know, when the players, you know, botch a roll... You know, mm -hmm. to say, okay, you know, tell me, player, given this environment, you know, mm -hmm. why did your character fail this role that they should have otherwise succeeded at because you yes. rolled a natural one? The icy surface of Europa. My hands are shaking too hard right. to make these repairs. Exactly. You know, yeah. and that's way to, another way to bring the, you know, keep the players mindful of the environment and how mm -hmm. it's affecting their characters. Yeah. And it just leads to better important. encounters. I mean, if you, especially if you add like a time aspect to it so like each round something new happens as the catastrophe unfolds that escalates mm -hmm. things and it makes it memorable for players while they're dealing with all these oh, situations yeah. i mean i i love to think of hero points as the excuse i as the gm have to take another action in fact, <laughs> yes. if you this is one of my personal tricks if you want one of those you know from every other superhero show you know every time one of the heroes attacks the villain gets an immediate reaction to counter attack Mm -hmm. So if you want that kind of feel with your big bad, especially early in an adventure, all you do is break out your big bad, roll initiative normally, and then every time a hero goes, toss them a hero point to give your villain another, another attack. Yep. Uh, but you can do the same basically for having the environment attack your players or, mm -hmm. or cause other complications. Uh, and then my favorite... Favorite idea that I've been toying with lately, but haven't actually run at the table, is building the environment as a character, basically mm. as another supervillain yeah. in the fight. 
it's it's a way I think would be really fun to do funhouse style villains like Arcade or Mad Mod, <laughs> people who don't have like a superpower of their own, but you can't mm -hmm. attack them directly until you figure out like what's going on with their location. Like the the hideout itself is basically a super villain with the interpose advantage that stops you from just taking out the mastermind. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what the house, what the hideout can do each round is based on what powers you give it. How well you can attack it kind of depends on, you know, how impervious it is. And if it's got ranks of concealment that kind of represent, you mm -hmm. know, only certain panels can be attacked or are vulnerable. Right. It, you know, it's, it's vulnerable innards are harder to find and get okay. at yeah. as far as that goes. Yeah, it does. That's a really some cool fun, yeah, it does have, open up some fun ideas for countering. Like, you mm -hmm. know, in these locations, there are all these like laser blasters that flip up out of the floor and fire at people. And you can represent that with area effect damage, but you can also let your players counter that with mm -hmm. their own damage effect to say, I attack the laser turrets. Right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, we, we sort of play around with that idea in, in locations like the Doom Room and other you know, kinds of, of big trap locations that have mm -hmm. all of those moving parts to them. Yeah. Maybe that's a Patreon article. I don't mm. know. Do people I think want that'd be a really interesting article. Like, the environment yeah, as a villain written up for Patreon? <gasps> yeah. Places as villains. I think that'd be a really cool I mission. really love it. I, that, I think that's great. I, mean, I think it also traps just... Traps as minions? Traps mm. as minions. That yeah. is brilliant. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Oh, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, we're getting some. Mm -hmm. People are like really... They're really enjoying it um, for sure. AJ <laughs> Real says... All right. Nice, very nice, friends. Um, uh, so, a question then: um, uh, How far do you go in fleshing out this character? Like, I mean, if you're building all of that, you know, like, uh, you know, what's mm -hmm. the cadence of the interaction? You know, I'm imagining like interactions would where you know it's not like just a villain going "Hello, I'm a villain," mm -hmm. but it's like you know, uh, it's like a, uh, mm -hmm. something falling. You know, like you're in a cave and you know there's a collapse or uh, mm -hmm. you know a beast that lives in it come you know wakes up or or you know how how do you yes. for the people who are putting these things together how do you find that balance i mean i i mean you you could literally have it be like a self-aware location so mm -hmm. like a, a hollow deck with you know an ai running it or you know a haunted house I, mm -hmm. that's how we how we describe the haunted hotel in the danger zone mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. But you could also just, you know, build it as a construct that's not self-aware using the, the construct rules right. and just have it under the direction of the, the big villain who will do the mwahaha, welcome to my lair. Right. I love it. I mean, how much work you want to put into it depends on how much mm -hmm. it features in the adventure, mm. you know, mm -hmm. as to whether or not is this just a introductory or interstitial scene in the adventure or is this your big like you know dramatic fight at the end yeah uh, it, and then you're pulling out all the stops so this is the joker's fun house and you ran in mm -hmm. i have to go get him in Harley. yeah is this going to be and you can also make it a combination of like complications and effects and and then a uh, villain stat block at the end where you're mm -hmm. you have to go through all the fun house traps themselves which are built as you know minions or as complications or things like that for all the earlier encounters with minions right and then at the very end of everything when you reach the big bad villain well they're the one who know they're the ones who know all the tricks and 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 traps and how to right. take advantage of all of these things in their layer they've built so that's when suddenly the location becomes a villain in the fight mm-hmm yeah. And you could even um, you could even like include some of the locations' powers in those encounters with the minions. They just trigger every now and then, as mm -hmm. as set dressing instead of like yeah. being intentionally the the player's turn. Yep, I like that. I'm into yeah, that. Yeah, it's just not something the players can try to attack directly. It's something the players yeah. can counter at the time, but can't attack that character directly until the final confrontation. Right. Uh, Pook says, I often set up arcade-style trap scenarios uh, as a mm -hmm. series of skill challenges with various modifiers on them. Huh? I like it. Mm -hmm. 
Oh yeah. Yeah. We That's definitely what we did use it that. in uh Oh, what's the one where we had the factor four teaming up with Hell Queen? Oh, um Pentagram uh, Peril. Pentagram Peril, yep. Pentagram Peril, yes. Well you go to a trap filled dungeon in Antarctica and it's built yes. as a skill challenge where every time you fail a challenge you fall in or fall victim mm -hmm. to a trap of some sort. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I was also thinking you can also play around with the notion of, uh, you know, sort of unintentional uh, environmental effects in, in uh, a situation like the, um, the, the, you know, sort of classic running fight of, you know, the headquarters is collapsing and you're having a running fight, you know, while you're trying to escape and everything is, you know, coming down around you or you're even having a, you know, running fight with the villain while you're both in free fall amongst the, you know, wreckage of the, you know, villain's lair that is all falling to earth. Uh, Bold of and, you to assume I can't fly. Right, you know. <laughs> uh, but yeah, do we, do we want to talk out some like specific ideas for alien environments and hazards, things like that, just yeah. so people can use tit for tat? I love it. Did we sure. have a question um, real quick and it's, uh, Nicholas Morrow, uh, who, by the way, Nicholas, I'm glad you arrived, you know, um, uh, while we would love for you to be here for the entire time, just knowing you showed up and hanging out with us is always a, always a pleasure. So uh, what type mm -hmm. of environmental effects would you suggest in a regular high school? I mean, <laughs> food fight. Me <laughs> I mean, mechanically, uh, we are going to have to watch out for trip attacks a lot in my experience and disarm yeah. attempts. Oh, lunch is probably a perilous yeah, uh, arrangement. So Lunch is a skill challenge. And I mean, depending on the the kind of high school game you're running, you know, one of the big environmental challenges of high school scenarios is often the need for characters to be subtle, mm -hmm. uh, and it's the challenge of how do you handle uh, this this situation in a crowded cafeteria without giving away your secret identity, for example. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I will say getting to class on time is probably an athletic skill check. Yeah, definitely. Although maybe a little stealth. Yeah, maybe expertise student if you've got mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Every round the uh, school gets a chance to demoralize you with an intimidation check. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I was, I was thinking, yeah. you know, demoralized checks are pretty common if you're any kind of minority student or yeah. just a yeah. student. There, there is the, the, you know, environmental challenge of escaping from the inside of a locker. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's gotta be right. a strength check, and I got bad news for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I was too big to go in the locker. They duct taped me to the locker. Oh mm. no! <laughs> Did they really do that? That happened once, but that was <laughs> freshman year. Yeah, I I was the tiniest kid in school up until my freshman year, and then I hit six feet, and suddenly. People didn't want to pick on me as much. Mm -hmm. Makes a difference. Yeah, I, I, I basically was born 6'5", and uh, people just left me alone. Like, I was always the tallest kid. Uh, I was a freshman with chest hair, so people wanted to see how easy it was to rip out. That was oh. everybody's big thing. Oh. What is wrong oh. with these people? American teenagers. You no, know, it was yeah. the early 2000s. It was uh, a different time. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to say uh, Hero High has a, a popularity advantage. Mm-hmm. So that's Indeed. that's definitely one you should take advantage of. Although also, I personally think it should be saved as something the GM rewards you with, or takes mm -hmm. away. Yeah. Uh, Pook said kids uh, are savage sociopaths. I think left to their own devices when they are mimicking what they think adults do. Yeah, they're pretty nasty yeah. um, for sure. But, uh, you so know, alien environments. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, like we said, the school cafeteria. Uh, uh, <laughs> right. Yeah, I will Speaking say like complication wise. Yeah, complication wise, you're going to have to deal with like oh, this student has wandered into the middle of your fight mm -hmm. or, you know, oh, sure. yeah. uh, somebody, somebody is overlooking, you know, seeing something they shouldn't and you've got to figure out how to play it off or right. distract them or, oh, an assembly. or scare them away. Yeah. Or, All yeah, you've got to be building. in an assembly or at practice or uh, in a specific class that you can't just miss for whatever right. reason. You know, you've got to be in the guidance counselors. You've got to be in the guidance counselor's office to talk about why you keep missing classes. So you can't right, really duck yeah. out. 
Yeah. And they're like, why aren't you wearing pants? The test is already over. You've missed your class. Wait, no, that's the dream. Yeah, never mind. No, um, no, that's that dream that's... control villain that's been harassing you. Uh, right. uh, that's a rude dream control <laughs> villain is villainous and uh, pretty active. Well, here's a question for um, when we're dealing with things like it, this is, I guess this is still environment, right? I mean, we're talking about, mm -hmm. um, we're talking about the, you know, uh, what's uh, Pooch say, avoiding jocks, um, you know, kind of the classic, um, you know, uh, avoiding the sociopaths, which are all the kids, including yourself, uh, you know, avoiding bullies. Now, would you, 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 would you count that as environmental hazards? I'm just because that's where they're coming from or were they villains? <laughs> I would I mean, say because these of... are things, oh, go ahead, Crystal, sorry. I was going to say, it, it mostly depends on how they're being used. Like, mm -hmm. just general yeah. background harassment is going to be an environmental effect. But unnamed, like somebody who walks up to you, calls you by name, and you're like, oh, hi, Todd. Right. Your bully that's nemesis. Mm -hmm. That's uh, I like this. Michael. Chad. Uh, <laughs> Chad, yeah. <laughs> Michael McNeil says uh, hazards. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's what we call uh, them in the age system, basically. Yeah, I like that. Uh, Nicholas Morrow, you have come up with your own list. Food fights, random trip attacks, being subtle, anti being subtle. This is our list. Okay, this, I like that. Anti-late, mm -hmm. uh, let's see, demoralized checks, bullies, and avoid bullies checks. Uh, you're welcome, my friend. I'm glad you... I'm glad you enjoyed it. Um, have fun uh, yeah. terrorizing your teenagers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. have, a, have a good time. Uh, yeah, and folks, if you have questions, uh, we... We can pontificate on uh, on your answer as well. So, um, oh yeah, we do. We should point out that there are in two different alien schools in Starhaven. So this is relevant yep. to our discussion this on is. alien uh, environments. It sure is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, so let's let's uh, roll into that then. Um, let's talk about our alien environments. Yeah. So I mean, just in terms of what we've got on Europa. If that's where you want to start, you've got a, a the green zone is pretty comfortable, but outside mm -hmm. of that, it is there's no air. Yep. So you got to well, no, there is air well, on Europa. There just, is an atmosphere, but it's not breathable. Not, yeah. <laughs> not breathable by you, pink skin. True. <laughs> True. That was my human privilege talking. <laughs> <laughs> oh god aliens giving the other characters methane swirlies by forcing their heads out of the bubble right. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> so good. Um, i hate that the bubble is transparent enough hey. to push people through it right <laughs> Translucent, uh, <laughs> yes yeah. and substantial enough Why is know. the bubble not yeah. solid <laughs> is the bubble basically snot can you push your way through it or or is it mm -hmm. uh like solid and you have to go find a porthole. It's yep. in an episode one shield generator. Just push all the battle <laughs> uh, birds through it. Mm. Uh, but yeah, on Europa, you've got like c severe enough cold that it's a constant, not just environmental hazard where you have to save every minute, mm -hmm. but I would right. honestly say that's probably damaging cold at that point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, depends on how you want to play it. I I think in the official rules we're gonna say it's a once per round like damage rank one cold or rank one cold damage once per round just mm -hmm. environmentally and then yeah. you know severe cold so you have to make a check every single round or a fortitude check every single round. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and then you've got you know no air so hold your mm -hmm. breath. And severe radiation, which you can either use the the rules in the hero's handbook for radiation, which refresh my memory. That's a toughness check to avoid con drain or stamina yeah, I drain. Wanna say, I want to say, yeah. It doesn't come up very often in my games. <laughs> right. Right? Which is well, weird. Superhero games, you'd think there'd be a lot of radiation. Yeah. You know, but it's and mostly the, irradiated things. The thing with, you know, alien environments is really the fact that they are severe. And mm -hmm. a lot of it is about the, you know, you want to get away from that environment as quickly as you possibly can into some place safe. Yeah, uh, a lot of a lot of times the dangers of an alien environment are one finding a way for you to survive in that environment, so getting mm -hmm. yourself an environmental suit, and two, 
fighting villains who survive justified in that environment. Right, and can take advantage of the traps. Mm -hmm. They're trying to they rip your, take your helmet off. Yeah. 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 Well, we talk about that in the, the To the Moon adventure, um, mm -hmm. where characters are basically fighting, you know, the, the giant alien blob on the surface of the moon. Uh, the notion that a lot of the characters are going to be in environmental suits and it's a great complication for the GM mm -hmm. to introduce if their suit gets damaged or ruptured uh, and they have to take an action to patch it or something like that. There's going to be a lot of distractions that are going to keep the characters from being as efficient as they usually are in terms of you know really teaming up against this monster because they're worried about just making sure they don't suffocate. Yep, and it's definitely an occasion where the points you invest into immunity really feel really pay off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I like this. Uh, Michael says that there's an arena in Car Wars boats that had ramps to do boat jumps. You had to burn five miles per hour of acceleration just to not slide backwards. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that's fun. I mean, that's kind of like Easter eggy kind of environmental uh, interactions is fun. Sure. Small field of strange eggs. That is an environmental hazard you really want to get away from quickly. Right. Or quietly. <laughs> yes. Especially if you're allergic to eggs like I am. Yuck. I don't think I'm the allergy is huggers. really going to be your problem. <laughs> I'm, I'm allergic Chains to molecular acid. <laughs> so am I. Wow. Let's just say you really do not quite. want to break quarantine. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, that's true no matter what time period you're in. <laughs> Well, I mean, they oh. mostly come out at night. Mostly. mostly. The problem uh, is Crystal's the smart woman, so Steve and I are going to get killed by the aliens. Yeah, I know, right? I know. That's what that whole movie's about. <laughs> but I about. like Steve and Alex. <laughs> but, you know, our, our deaths will be suitably tragic and motivating, you know. Yeah. So I'm not young enough to no. be new. That's fair. I do know how to drive a forklift. I was just going to say, when Crystal you know, breaks out the, the, you know, the, the mech, you know. Get away from her, you. <laughs> Are we allowed Swear to word. say naughty words on this podcast? I don't know. <laughs> we, I don't think we've done. I think we've been, we've kept it pretty. I, um, I remember the network TV edit, which was "Get away from her, you witch." <laughs> that's right. <laughs> In our case, it would be "Get away from her, you pitch for environments." <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, hey, how do we do explosive decompression in Mutants and Masterminds, everyone? <laughs> Quick, how do you handle it? I'm, I'm disembodied. <laughs> I'm disembodied. Yes, yes, Nicholas Marley. Troy's disembodied, are. so he automatically fails his strength check to resist. That's yep. true. I just got sucked out into space. I'm just more gaseous than anything else. Uh, yeah, I'm thinking speaking. it's going to be a, a strength check each round, and mm -hmm. how far you go yep. is basically for every rank every one you miss your strength check you were dragged that distance, distance rank, rank. The hole in the wall mm -hmm. uh, I I like it. so that it's is pretty much how it works i i honestly don't know if we have explosive decompression rules in we, uh... we do they're in they're into the moon oh, oh perfect <laughs> because there's there's a, I, you know i should know that i developed to the moon there's a scenario where the characters could rupture the dome on uh, um far side city that feels like an intergalactic no. incident Right, you know, I mean, well, I mean, superheroes and you know, it's just an interplanetary incident, fragile yeah. alien environments. You know, the chances of mm -hmm. you know them puncturing through something is pretty good. In my defense, the gorillas were attacking, right? Or <laughs> <laughs> if that holds up in court, yep, <laughs> it's like the it's like a mind control defense. Like, Your Honor, yes. I did not. Um, well, I did steal all those Fabergé eggs. I feel it's important to remind you I was under the sway of the mind chicken. <laughs> mind chicken. Yes. <laughs> Is that a Curse of Cowardly Dog villain? I don't think so. <laughs> but, I mean, the thing is, anytime a Fabergé egg goes missing, look for the mind chicken. Look it's for basically the mind chicken. his entire shtick. Right. Right. Really? I mean, it gets tiring after a while. You're just like, I get it already. You're a chicken. You like and fancy you've all frozen eggs. on me, which means I've probably frozen for you. Your voice yeah. is still coming through, but your yeah. face is frozen. You are. You are. You have a very um, uh, energetic expression. It's true. I mean, it's, it's, you're going to freeze. There you are. That's how it goes. Yeah. Yeah, the chicken's name is Fabergé. It's just taking its eggs back. Sure. Uh, right. Yes. <laughs> um, 
Uh, like, <laughs> yeah. Fabergé <laughs> Le Cloak. <laughs> Le Cloak. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, Michael McNeil says, "Criminal court, yes, but civil court's yes. another matter entirely." Yeah, yeah. Well, it's yeah. like that, you know, Astro City issue that was all about, you know, all of the terrible legal precedents that you can introduce when, you know, things like evil twins and, you know, mind control <laughs> exist. You know, is there, you know, like everything has reasonable doubt? <laughs> That's <laughs> right. right. This is your friendly reminder to make sure your superhero is an LLC, so you can't get sued. The entity mm -hmm. sued. smart, very <laughs> smart. Yeah, and go for an arbitration clause. That's all I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Don't leave it up to the courts. Yeah, I'm going to need you to opt into this user agreement before I rescue you. <laughs> before I rescue you, yeah. <laughs> ah, I love it. Uh, streaming. Also, you're going to have to acknowledge this DMCA contract so that mm -hmm. you are not allowed to use my likeness in any images online. Right. Mm -hmm. Without prior written... Yes, let's see. Uh, is there... <laughs> <laughs> well, it sounds like I have to stat up a new villain for the Patreon. Right. Yeah, that Sean, I mean, like... <laughs> keep, you would love mm -hmm. the art. Uh, the art of the mind chicken is... Um, it's exquisite. Yes, sublime. It's sublime. It's All right. Really, really you know nice. what? I'll tell you what. I will stat this villain up as a Patreon exclusive, and I'll make some art. I'm not going to make wow. good art. Wow. <laughs> Says you. Well, I've there you go, Sean. Up again, haven't I? You know, yeah. um, nab it. <sighs> I'm glad that Crystal doesn't break out into wild swearing because oh. uh, we can hear you when you uh, disconnect. We, we can still <laughs> hear you, but you just can't hear us. <laughs> um but oh, yeah dear. that's that's pretty awesome wow. um i'm uh i also like to point out that crystal's idea of bad art is way better than what i, can. I know <laughs> well yeah i was gonna say when crystal's like you know i didn't have time to build it to scale or paint it you know yeah exactly i didn't get a chance to <laughs> construct this entire environment in my front yard for people to explore yeah, yeah exactly well, it's not to scale, so. <laughs> right. And all I've really got to work with here for art is my iPad and an eye pencil. So mm -hmm. don't expect wow. much. Yeah. Well, Fun fact, all of Crystal's Danger Zone maps, she actually built in her front yard and subjected people to she the Danger does. Zone. She does. I didn't subject them. They're neighborhood children. They get into everything. <laughs> that's true. And I mean, Might honestly. as well make some use out of that. That's right. That's true. That's true. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, they're Look, not. I even put yet. a sign out. It said, "Children do not come in here. No free candy." <laughs> That's the best it. reverse psychology clear. ever. <laughs> I love that. Uh, well, you know, Michael, I'm glad to hear that. Uh, Michael says, "Holy crap! Today alone is going to convince me to support the Patreon." <laughs> Honestly, if the mind chicken was... doesn't do the support the Patreon, I don't know what will. I honestly, I really, I feel like we've we've just uh, a, a, I, a uh, yeah. You know what? Burnt. If we maybe we need a tier that's like I'm supporting it for the C list villains that Crystal pitches every month <laughs> yes, or every right. uh, Monday. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, a use for Crystal's love for C list villains. <laughs> oh. <laughs> AJ I, Real says. Yeah. I'm here for the mind chicken. <laughs> You're joking, but mind chicken God. is going to be another war in a couple of weeks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what have I done? Lots of uh, things escaped from the dungeon dimension. I mean, lots of true. things did. Cork did. <laughs> you just didn't know that the dungeon dimension was Crystal's brain. <laughs> uh, that explains uh, so much. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? Doesn't it? I love that. I'm not sure if Fult I'm not sure if Jonesy was swearing or what, but uh, we get three asterisks. So uh, mm -hmm. use your imagination. Um, mm -hmm. I do want to share something. So we got about ten minutes left. I can't believe this. Uh, we're just getting all warmed up. We got some mind right. chicken on the grill. We're just hanging out. <laughs> and um, you're not allowed to eat mind chicken. It's sapient. Oh, that's cannibalism. <laughs> Probably. Oops. I don't know. Oopsies. Um, it is brain food though. It is really delicious. Oh. <laughs> I love it. Um, but uh, we are, um, I don't know if people remember this. Um, some time ago, we began a bit of a, a partnership, a, a bit of a partnership, a, like a rock solid partnership with our friends at uh, Sirenscape. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we have so much stuff coming down the pike. It's coming down the pike, isn't it? It's coming down the pike. Isn't pike. that the, the I think it's a it, pipe. I think it's mm -hmm. pike. 
This is not a pipe. <laughs> <laughs> right? Oh, man. It's a pipe if you're brave enough. Mm-hmm. That is true. <laughs> Whatever it's coming down, though, there's a lot of it. There's a lot yeah, of it. Every machine it's is a down. smoke machine if you're brave. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, a pook says, I think it is Pike, and you know, a pook uh, is always uh, correct. So, um, but uh, this, I don't know if, you, if you've, have you three played with uh, Sirenscape? I think I'm actually on some yeah. of the recordings. Uh, what? Yeah. what? I'm actually in a couple of the recordings too. Yeah. No. I, I am, am not, and I have not. <laughs> I, <laughs> I am several of the kobold screeches. Mm. And he's got a shopkeeper set with a creepy old shopkeeper woman. Is that you? That is me. As (sighs) if I needed something else to be jealous of Crystal (laughs) Fraser. I love it. You had to be cobalt voices? I love cobalt. I don't know if... I I don't know if this is going to work, but... um... Oh, Jonesy just um, uh, shared with me Pike or Pipe, but you know, honestly, they're both right. You know what you're saying. Mm-hmm. Let's not. Uh, let's it's not only do Pike this. in Scotland. That's right, and that's only when you've got your yard decorated with a bunch of pikes and uh, heads well, of your enemies. Is, what if you have a Pike coming down the pipe? Mm. Oh, then Move I guess you face. get out of the way, yeah. right? I don't I know. Mean. Sounds like a villain to me. Pipe, Pike. <laughs> The Pike Piper. The Pike Piper. Right. <laughs> the Pike Piper. It's a fish themed mind control villain. Oh mm. my god. It's a musical oh, fish themed oh, oh. mind control With villain. a spear. <laughs> oh, this is so good. <laughs> Uh, Sean Vieira dropped a link to the uh, Sirenscape. Now I'm going to try this. I, I, you know, this is a little uh, named Wanda. Says Michael. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, let me. I'm going to. I'm going to share something. That, um, let's see if this works. We'll see if it works. I, right. I've, I've managed to get. We're looking for you, Troy. Oh, I think I can do it. I'm going to click this share audio. And we shall see. All right. I haven't heard any noise coming from this yet, but this is beta. Is this... So do you hear it? I don't know. No, I do not either. No, I hear my, I hear my echo, echo now. now. Oh, you do? That's quite, that's quite the, the echo. echo. Nice. Well, that's exactly not. Yeah. Reverb. Reverb. <laughs> well, so we're going to figure that out. Um, I am really excited about it because it is amazing what they've done. I have not known about all of this. I did not know that you were already oh, so the stars cool. of the mm-hmm. of the audio, uh, the, the little screen audio. I don't know. Yeah. Um, uh, but big screen, heart of gold. I'm looking forward to finding that crazy what is it the the crazy um, um woman? shopkeeper shopkeeper yeah sean vieira says uh i need to have the player installed i do sean yeah um i, I do have mm. it installed and this is the this is the beta web version of it um but uh i will let you know that we've got some sirenscape goodies that are coming for people who are wa- or who watch and, and hang out with us here and and then big big goodies for people who are um uh on the patreon peace and they've got some really nice um uh space and cosmic themed uh soundtracks mm-hmm. too which would go very nicely with starhaven that's right mm-hmm. they even have starhaven mm-hmm. which is pretty <laughs> I was like, I, I even Steve. I was like, Steve, they have a whole. It's Star Haven. It's already here. He's like, oh yeah, yeah. We, oh, yeah. Did I not mention that? We know. Uh, yeah. Patreon link is uh, Patreon. Dot. Well, let me make sure I'm spelling that right. Uh, Patreon. Dot com slash mutants a and b masterminds, and that's where you will find us um Mm -hmm. i uh also um a little bird just shared something with me which i think is pretty exciting um i'm gonna actually share that because we have just oh only a few more minutes why not why not just change it up um one second while i get to it um while i do that 
Uh, Crystal, do you um, uh, anything that you want to share with the world? Um, any kind of news or or uh, stuff that people should uh, be on the lookout for? Oh gosh, um, the the Gamma Flight Three came out uh, Ooh, right. last week or two weeks ago. Two Things weeks have been ago. happening so fast. Um, right. So yeah, if you like weird Hulk related stories that involve green Sasquatches and uh, the Absorbing Man and Titania being adorable, uh, please go pick up Gamma Flight. Issues one, two, and three are available at your friendly local comic store. Issue four is coming out two weeks. Exciting! Two weeks, now, I think? Did, did yeah. you say green Sasquatch? Mm-hmm. Green Sasquatch. Oh. It was a Sasquatch, like a like a Bigfoot. Yes, it's like a proper Sasquatch. Oh, a Sasquatch! Yeah. I yeah, thought you said Sasquatch, Squatch, like a Bernays or a. So you Sasquatch with a culinary degree. <laughs> yeah, or like a gravy Squatch. Gravy. Oh yeah, in in Spanish it's pronounced salsa Squatch, but. Mm-hmm. Um, delicious. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, Steve, how about you? Oh, gosh. I don't think I've got much in the way of, of news this week. Certainly nothing to match the, you know, the salsa splotch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, Apuk is corrected. He is a sassy squatch. Yes, that is sassy true. Squatch. The that, best squatches are. True. We, we, had to, we had to cut some of the character development I wanted for him and Charlene, but there was going to be some, some, some implications. No! Oh, we almost got. I know, up. right? We almost got the really good inside the tea Jew, there, the, right there, right on the tip of her tongue, literally. Come back, Crystal. Pour some marble tea. Oh, there she's back. Oh, oh and she's no, gone. she's gone. <laughs> oh. on it. What a tease! Yeah, exactly. Uh, Alex, I know you've got some fun stuff cooking tonight. I sure do. Yeah. Um, in about an hour, we're going to be doing Nether War, but we're going into the Idiot Box. So we're going to be doing a whole bunch of fun fun TV shows, including uh, Surreal Home Makeover. Uh, what else are we doing? Battle Space 2000. And my favorite... Oh, I have my favorite one. Happy Tree Friends. Mm-hmm. Happy Tree Friends. Let me tell you, folks... Alex was talking to me before the stream. His players are in trouble. Yeah, this is going to be one that you're going to want to watch. Alex, how do they, where will they find that? Yeah, it'll be, oh, I'm also doing, are you startled by the lack of light instead of are you afraid of the dark? (laughs) (laughs) Um, We will be live at twitch.tv slash untold stories project, which will be fun. We're going to have a whole bunch of fun. So please come hang out if you want to. If you want to see my players bang their heads against the wall until one of them gets frustrated and quits. I love I remember that. By, I remember, are you startled by the lack of light? That was on Snock, right? Mm-hmm. That's right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Saturday Nocturnal Odeon. That's mm-hmm. right. Nocturnal Lodian. <laughs> I love it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sean Vieira says, after reading uh, Crystal's comment, would love to hear her take on Doom Patrol. Oh, I would love to write I, Doom Patrol. Yeah. I would buy that in a heartbeat. <laughs> <laughs> How did you know this? Uh, the cliffhanger last week was the giant letter C coming down the street to uh, uh, tell them that words mm-hmm. do start with C, and it was going to tell them all of them. Oh, jeez. Words yeah. like consume and clobber <laughs> and chew. <laughs> and calamity. And cloaca. Yes. <laughs> cloaca. Oh, no. Oh. That word wasn't on my list, but it's in there now. But it is now. <laughs> I love it. All right. Friends, we have reached the uh, we have reached maximum chicken. <laughs> we have yes. we are are um uh done for the day. Uh a fantastic um Mutants and Masterminds Monday. Uh a joy as always. I want to thank everybody who hung out and asked questions. Um I, I love <laughs> <laughs> all of the uh, chat is, is just a joy. If you want to, um, if you have a question for the team and you want to submit it, uh, send a note to let's play at green and, uh, and we'll endeavor to answer it. If I remember, um, and then also, you know, come and hang out with us and, and pester us. You know, we also hang out with Owen Casey Stevens every Thursday for Thursday age, mm-hmm. um, with the nicest guy in the biz and that wouldn't mm-hmm. be me trust uh it's owen um we have a lot of fun 2 p.m pacific 
uh, you know, in all these same places. We just, uh, you know, dress the place up differently. It's the same studio, same same situation. Um, but uh, Crystal, Steve, Alex, thank you so much. Um, another joyous uh, um, Mutants and Masterminds Monday under our belt. I think this is now our three millionth. Um, mm -hmm. Thereabouts. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, and I I leave you all with this thought. I <laughs> shudder in cloacal horror. Uh, I I'll love be really it. Impressed if Alex can work in crossplay. Mm. <laughs> yes, come on, crossplay okay, exactly. Uh, and I look forward to Cloaca. Um, everybody, uh, <laughs> good day to you all. Enjoy the rest of your week, and we will see you again very soon. Bye bye. Bye everybody. Bye.